Welcome to Cheese In Depth webinars. I'm Michael Landis, and today we are meeting with Marie Kay. Today's Meet the Cheesemaker segment is sponsored by the great folks at the Dairy Farmers of Wisconsin. With over 1,200 licensed cheesemakers in the only state that requires a license to make cheese, they are also the only place outside of Europe with a master cheesemakers program. Today I'm talking with Marie Kay from Holland Family Farms, who is also a licensed cheesemaker this afternoon. Hey folks, uh, thank you for joining us. Thank you, Michael, for the introduction. So here's ours, Marika did it. Michael, did you cut yours the same way? I haven't even started cutting mine. I thought I'd wait for you guys and then start uh, cutting along with you, because right now is really a great cut. time to uh, be able to start with these five cheeses. And uh, I also believe that you have some frosty beverages as well. We do. We oh, brought up. And we already start digging into it. So I'm sorry. So cheers, That's everybody. Okay. That's uh, I, this is oh, not our beer, but this is a new Glarus beer. And I'm starting to get more famous through the United States. Um, we have Spotted Cow. And uh, maybe it's just because of the name of it, but it's really good. It's our favorite. Yeah. And then I got a Kip Coles or something. So uh, it's unique to Wisconsin. And I hope to welcome you all to, to sample some cheese and drink a beer that's true to Wisconsin also. Uh, well, when I was up there with you, we, I, we drank our, our fa uh, fair amount of <laughs> spotted cow together. All right. So let's uh, take a look at our... Our first cheese, which is going to be the uh, young Gouda. So that young Gouda is going to be super creamy, it's buttery, um, mild with sweet notes. So this is our plain Gouda recipe. This is where it all starts before we start aging it out to older um, time frames and before we start adding delicious ingredients. So here you go, Marika. Michael, what would you pair with the young Gouda? Well, you know, with the, the young Gouda, um, I, I think staying with something really simple. Because it has so much flavor, it's got a lot of butter to it, it's got a little bit of nuttiness, I'm just going to do something a little, little simple, and I'm going to uh, squirt a little bit of uh, honey on this to give it a little bit more sweetness and flavor. Mm, it's good. I have to say, I kind of blew my own mind with this one. <laughs> Honey works really well. It um, just adds a little bit. There's uh, so much butter here. The creaminess, the richness that you have, that if you add something a little bit sweeter, it picks up a little bit more of the tanginess that you get in the young Goudas. As they age, you know, they get a lot more maple caramel. But taking advantage of this uh, slight tang uh, by adding a little bit there really brings that up. And uh, I'm going to pair this up with a uh, Pilsner. Oh, yeah. That would be really good. I have an ale here, and it's really good. So, yeah, I, I decided that... Uh, Traditionally, you know, you have a tremendous amount of history with uh, Goudas. And so uh, bringing out one of the original Pilsner is, is uh, Pilsner Urquell. And uh, it's just a really, really simple, uh, easy Pilsner. But with the slight tanginess that you have, all the amount of butter th that's with this, uh, this gives it a nice cleansing. Plus, it's got that bready-like quality, so you're kind of adding in a little bit of its own biscuit. You know, this is liquid bread, so, you know, they go real well. Mm, yummy. And the thing is also with our Gouda, because it's a farmstead, and you've tasted, especially in the young one, we don't standardize our milk, which means that often at creameries, they would take the milk uh, to a certain fat level, but we take the milk as the dish, from the dairy farm and uh, so it's full fat and it gives this full flavor too. I'm not sure if we mentioned this but five hours after the first milking is when we make our first batch of cheese so it's super fresh. 
I have some um, rustic bakery. This is uh, just olive oil and a little bit of sea salt. And this is another thing with having it so much butter, having that sweet saltiness is also really nice along with the cleansing part of the beer. Yes. Another thing with our young Gouda is that it's great with the grilled cheese sandwich. I guess uh -huh. over at lunchtime, my daughter asked one for a grilled cheese. So I always use the younger cheeses there because they melt better uh, due to the protein connection. And uh, so young cheese is wonderful because where you see where all the cheese is just kind of evaporates a little bit more. Younger cheese, if you can cook it on uh, lasagna, um, uh, shred it over tacos or smoked cumin. We'll talk about it later when you try it, but great over tacos or chili. Uh, so goudas are great to, uh, to do it with any recipe, so. Okay. Fabulous cheese and such a great way to be able to start with this. You know, you can have this for uh, breakfast, lunch, dinner. You can snack on this. This really goes with everything being that it's not as complicated as a lot of the others and without all the flavors, it really lends itself well to just being a nice snacking cheese. So really love this. One of my and favorites. Yeah, and before we go to the next one, I want to give you this little recipe hint already for the next one. And that's, uh, so you can, while you taste it, can really imagine it, but um, shred it up or cubed up in a pancake batter, and then make the pancake, and then drizzle maple syrup over it. Well, I added a little bit of the honey to it, because that, you add a little bit of sweetness like that, and it really brings out the buttery flavors of the cheese. It's wonderful. All right. Let's go ahead and uh, go to our next cheese. This is the Fenugreek. So this is the one that won our very first award. And this is the one that's going to taste a little sweet and now that first taste a little bit like maple syrup. Cheers. Cheers. So this is the cheese. This has always been my personal favorite cheese. This is why I work this here. This is how I got you. So, yeah, this, this is right? why I work here. <laughs> fenugreek. We did a lot with the fenugreek. I can tell you. We got the best people with the fenugreek cheese. Mm -hmm. I think we even paid some advertising in the beginning when casserole was a little bit lower. <laughs> we would ask them, would you take some fenugreek? So, so the fenugreek is one of those cheeses that like your customers aren't really going to know what it is. So if you um, have a retail business, you want to sample this cheese when we can get back to sampling. And this it, it's almost a guaranteed sale. Yeah. So whenever we do demos, we always demo the fenugreek because it's a guaranteed sale for the store. And there's so many fun stories with the fenugreek. Uh, we have customers that come in the store because fenugreek, we had we had holes that we had no not enough supply of the fenugreek. It took off and people would come in and they would get really upset. Like, how do you mean there's no fenugreek? Oh. You know, when do you have it available? I always would think they would just take mm -hmm. off and I would never see them again. We said, okay, we'll come back then. <laughs> you have to tell the story about the dog. Yeah. This is a great story. <laughs> So even my family loves the fenugreek. So the kids were just, mom, where's the, well, we really want fenugreek. And actually I want to, I really want a fenugreek too. So I went to some of our local stores, but they were all out of fenugreek too. So they had, the kids had to go to a dentist and across of the ten, dentist is also um, the radio, uh, radio is there. So they have a little, uh, the radio station has a little tea store in front of it and said, well, let's go and check it out if they have fenugreek. I said, but mom doesn't want to be recognized. I don't want to, I don't want them to think that our business is going bad and I have to buy my own cheese in stores around it to make it look good. So I had my hoodie up, you know, I told the kids, well, just make yourself small. We'll just go in and look. And there was one piece, one pie cut of fenugreek good up. So I'm like, oh, this is going good. I don't think anybody's recognizing me here. So I'm checking out. And as I walk out with that one piece of fenugreek, the lady behind me goes, till next time, Marika. I'm like, oh, dang it. Okay. <laughs> but we got home. We got our fenugreek. We got our pie cut of fenugreek. I'm cutting it up. Kids super excited. They run upstairs, put on their pajamas. I go into the living room. I set it on our, on our table, coffee table. I walk out to grab the drinks. And I didn't thought of it, but here goes Buddy, our dog. He goes into the living room while I go into the kitchen. 
And when I come into out of the kitchen to the living room, the dog crosses me again. And I come to the coffee table and the fenugreek is gone. And I'm like, kids? And yeah. And they go, what? And I hear them upstairs. I'm like, okay, it's not the kids. Body took off with our fenugreek. Apparently our dog lost our fenugreek to that too. So that was a bad evening. Bad evening for the dog. He was really in the dog house. Pairing it up with some uh, dark chocolate, uh, adding a little bit of that flavor. Uh, because you have all that maple, uh, again, uh, having something that's just a little, little less sweet to bring out more of the maple and a little bit of the chocolate or dark chocolate in that. And then as for beverages, I'm actually pairing this up with the uh, uh, Blue Moon, and this is their iced coffee blonde. And to be able to add a little bit of that kind of flavor in there is really unique in a way as it brings more richness across the board. You have the maple, you have the coffee, you have the chocolate. So it's really, really fun. Those are great combinations. Yes. I never thought about adding the chocolate. The chocolate is really good. I actually, somebody at a cheese event, uh, there was a chocolate fondue across of us. And okay. they used our fenugreek in their chocolate fondue. Nice. And don't forget about the pancake recipe. That's really good too. Mm -hmm. We also um, used the fenugreek um, in like a smashed red potato. Oh, yeah. Remember that? That mm -hmm. was really good. And that was really good. And I'm wondering, we also have a grilled cheese recipe with the fenugreek. Yep. And yep. then bacon and then a jalapeno mayo, I think, is on it. So really good. Be creative. That's great. All right. Anything else on the cheese? What are you drinking okay. with it? Oh, yeah, I should open another beer, actually. I only have beers. Okay, we have, I'm gonna try now. I'm gonna take the Moon Man, and the Moon Man is an, um, a pale yeah. ale. Which one are you trying? I'm gonna go for... Totally naked. Yep, totally naked. All right. That would I don't know. I don't know what a totally naked is. I'll try. It's a beer, it says. Yeah. The pale's having a little bit of hoppiness in there. I think that the hoppiness, they're kind of like that uh, that pine or uh, uh, citrus should work well. Yep. Yeah. All right. All right, while you're so, contemplating so, the, uh, uh, the next, or the beer, mm -hmm. let's go ahead and move on to our next. So this one is our summer fields. This one is kind of a little hidden treasure. Um, even though the name is summer fields, we do offer this cheese year round, but this cheese is very herbaceous. And that's a fun word. Um, it has rosemary, thyme, there's a little tomato, onion, and garlic in this cheese. It's just a burst of flavor when mm -hmm. you try it. It's one of my favorites. Yeah, and it's really- Oh, it smells amazing. Yeah, and it would be great with bread. I don't know if we have some bread bakers here at, during the session, but um, that over melted over bread. Mm -hmm. or, I just imagine fresh, freshly baked bread and melted over with some summer fields with the Rosemary, mm -hmm. oh, it's just wonderful. And dipped in some oil. Mm. Yep, that would be very good. Like, I'm curious, what kind of wine would you pair with like an herbaceous cheese? I'm sorry? What kind of wine would you pair with an herbaceous cheese? Do you know? Well, you, would, you, would, you, you can, you can kind of go with the same theory on that of the, uh, uh, earthy grassiness, you know, so you could go with like a Sauvignon Blanc from New Zealand, and so they would kind of blend really together. But also you could do something a little sweeter, which will, which will also calm things down a little bit, uh, if you're looking at reds or whites. Um, you know, if you're, if you're looking at, I want, really want to do a white or a red wine with this, I'd probably say 
something like an Italian, like a, a Moscato da Asti or a, a Barbera da Asti, and um, uh, or you could even uh, go with uh, a Chianti, you know, because you want to want to kind of match up a little bit of that earthy grassiness. Mm -hmm. I'm uh, actually going with a uh, with uh, a beer from 610 Brewing, which is a local brewery around here, uh, and uh, uh, I'm. Uh, it's called Babel of the Nag, and mm -hmm. it is an IPA with vanilla and rosemary in it. So I thought, you know, how much, how fun would that be to kind of put those guys together, get a little bit of the rosemary, rosemary going on, and uh, and try with that. Actually not try. I did this earlier and uh, uh, I really love the way that they kind of blend together because the vanilla again brings out more of the butter, vanilla butter and uh, and the rosemary. I feel like we're in heaven right now. I know. It's warm here. The mm. sun is out <laughs> and we're eating cheese and we're drinking beer. <laughs> Michael, just a random question. Do you know what the average age is of a person in, in the United States? A what? A what the average, how do you say it? Do I say it right? The average mm -hmm. age of, an, uh, of a person in the United States is? No, I don't. 38.2. Really? Yeah. That's very low. Doesn't it sound very low? It sounds kind of low. I think I will have to double test that. Okay, but anyway, the average person in Wisconsin is way higher, 39.1. Ah. But I do have to double check because this doesn't sound good. So anyway, the, you can look it up. The average person of Wisconsin in Wisconsin is higher. Could it be from the cheese because of the cheese? I think it's totally because of the cheese. And probably some beer too. <laughs> It's not because of the weather, so... No, I it's not. Sure. Well, you know, I don't know. Maybe the cold weather preserves it. Oh, my God. I do. Uh, the, the H is a dozen. It doesn't seem right. But yeah. I know right, that so a person is, has a higher average age than yeah. America. So what beer do you have with this one? I still have the Moon Man, an ale. Oh, I'm still okay. Totally and it tastes really good. We could open another one. A lager. I think we could do. I think this is a, a lager. lager. Probably. We're gonna do a, a, the two women, and that's a lager. So we're gonna open that one up. And okay. gonna try. Lagers are nice for the fact that you get a nice cleanliness. It it really helps with the palate. And and you know when you when you have a cheese like this with all of that rosemary, all of that butter, all the flavors, it's really well balanced. You know there are rubs that there are uh, cheeses that have rubs on them they have rosemary on the exterior but having this on the inside and having it intermix with the buttery flavors is really amazing this would be something uh, uh stuffing a chicken with this or uh, oh, yeah. with, uh or putting it on top of a, a chicken taco would be really just amazing with the flavor characteristic of having that giving it that herbiness that uh, I think would really kind of speak out, you know, give it a different flavor. You know, we're always looking for something to do a little, tr take a traditional recipe and spin it a little differently. And this cheese fits right in there. Mm -hmm. And it's great on, I think lasagna would be a really good one too. Oh yeah. It's like a chicken lasagna. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Very but nice. Means People do try it with a beer or a wine. I think it's very important to uh, make sure you have it on room temperature. The cheese should always be on room temperature to get the fullest flavor out of it. That is true, that is true. I was fortunate enough to have this out and have a little bit of heat from the lights here. So I have a nice creamy cheese. All right, so uh, let's look at uh, what we're gonna do next which uh, I believe is going to be one of my all-time favorites, uh, getting a little bit of age in the cheese. That's right. So go ahead. No, you go ahead. So this is our golden, and our golden is an American original. And what that means is it's not necessarily a Gouda, 
and it's not necessarily a Parmesan, but Marika took both the Gouda cultures and the Parmesan cultures and made this amazing cheese. Yeah, so our golden is um, has a slightly different recipe, but it's based on a Gouda recipe. Um, and then we added some Parmesan cultures to it, uh, aged it a little bit uh, different, and um, our, uh, our rennet is based on a planet, a, a planet rennet. Vegetable. Yeah. Vegetable yeah. planet, yeah. I'm sorry. So it's very suitable for vegetarians also. Um, it's kind of tricky because our traditional Gouda's are made with a real rennet and it does set different. So it, it set, the milk set, sets different, it coagulates different uh, with those two different uh, rennets. So um, some of you, maybe when you get it, you will see there's a slightly green rind around it. Um, that is due to the coating. The coating that we are using is a para coating and it's breathable. Um, but because the color is different and uh, the coating comes from the Netherlands um, and the regulations here and in Europe are a little bit slightly different. So they have to make this a special coating for, to fit the requirements of the United States. The sad part was that it started look, uh, drooping through it. So it's kind of drooping through the, the yellow and yellow and, uh, and red kind of makes a green bluish um, teal color, yep. teal color green. So um, it is eatable. It's, you're really, it's, you will not taste different. It will not taste different, um, but that's a little bit what happens. So. Mm -hmm. so this cheese is aged six to nine months and it's gonna taste and look like it's a little bit older. Oops. This has a beautiful creaminess to it. And along creamy. with the nice buttery flavor, it's starting to get into its natural um, maple caramel flavor. So it's got a little bit of sweetness. So what mm -hmm. I decided to do with this one is that I'm going to use a pear paste. And this is Rutherford and Meyer. Uh, they have a wonderful pear paste that is uh, uh, no funny stuff, just pear. And I'm, you know, as much as I love cutting fruit and all that, I'm, I'm just not going to not gonna play with that. So uh, I add a little bit of the pear by using the pear paste, which is really natural. But the best part about this is adding an Effie's pecan nut cake to this. And this okay. takes it almost to like a, a sweet apple pie with all the butter and richness that you guys have. This is a, a perfect example how how good simple can be. You know, sometimes we add all these other things to it. Uh, I tried it with Moon Man, so that's a pale ale and uh, the golden, and I just let it linger on my tongue. And uh, it's simple, but it has so much flavor together. The combination is good. Um, there's not much you need right now, extras. Yeah, well, the pear paste, the uh, pecan homemade nut cakes, and uh, I'm pairing that up with an Italian Prosecco. And this has got some nice sweetness to it without being too sugary. It's got a little bit of acidic fruit, which blends perfectly with the cheese, the pear, the pecan, all of those things, and gives you a really nice little balance of flavors. Uh, this is, uh, if you're looking for a dessert to sit down and, and have something completely decadent, uh, this aged Gouda, the golden Gouda with the pear paste and, and pecan nut, nut cake and Prosecco, it's great after dinner and uh, good for you. It is, and that's that's a nice thing too, because you shouldn't limit yourself, because you're all worth it, right? You should try different things, mix and match, because what we like could be different for somebody else again, and uh, step out of your comfort zone. So whatever you have in front of you, mix and match it until you found your magic. Yeah, that's exactly right. You know, some of the best cheese boards I've ever done is just by rifling through the refrigerator. Um, I was uh, starting off earlier here and I got some fresh strawberries 
And I thought, well, you know, I, I think strawberries would really work really well. And actually, they were amazing with each of the cheeses, except for the last one. It didn't work as well. But all the others, <laughs> it was really interesting. And, and, you know, you don't have to go out and spend a million dollars in creating a cheese board. You can just use stuff, you know, don't be afraid to uh, experiment with it. I mean, half the stuff that we learn, we do by just playing around with stuff, trying it, grabbing it from the refrigerator and seeing where it goes. That's the fun part about pairing. It's, it's not a science. It's, a, it's an art of uh, discovery. It is. And there's hardly any combination that you go wrong or that it tastes really bad. You just try to find combination that you really like. So, Looks like it's time to move on to our last and final cheese. This is our smoked cumin. Go ahead. So this is hickory smoked. So we sell both the regular cumin cheese and then the smoked cumin cheese. And to me, this cheese tastes like an elevated taco, which is really simple, but um, it's amazing. This one would pair very well with um, on your charcuterie board with Italian oh, meat. Oh, yes. Um, I think this is a great cheese to pair with beer. Um, yeah, why not? I think so too. And uh, so this is a smoked cumin. What we do is we make, we have so the basic recipe that we make here, the Mariki Gouda signature Gouda recipe. Um, then we, all the ingredients just get added right before we pump the cheese curd into the drain table. Then we pump, then we add the flavors to it, the whatever we're making. So in this case, the cumin. Then the cumin Gouda is going in the brine for 60 hours again. Then we put it, we wrap it up in plastic and put it in boxes and then we send it to, uh, to the smoker. So a lot of people, when you have smoked cheeses, often, most of the time will be liquid smoke and liquid flavor added to it and that's not bad. Uh, we just like to go the traditional way. Yeah. Um, in, the, in the beginning, because we're making now, so uh, 2006, November 2006, was so we're doing this almost for 14 years. In the beginning, we had a smaller cheese fat and when we would bring it to the smoker, I actually would have it in the boxes wrapped up and I would put it in the back of my, uh, in my car. So that's a little <laughs> bit of how we did it in the beginning. But uh, we wrapped it up a little bit, we became more professional. Um, but this smoke Gouda, this is where we still um, stay true to it. We do everything the traditional way. So we still send it through the same smoker and he smokes it, it comes back then we add our uh, paracoding over it and let it age at least a minimum of 60 days. Our smoke has done very well in competition. It actually ended up one time fifth at the World Cheese Competition and uh, until uh, a German judge came to me, don't tell anybody, but he came to me and he says, Marika, it was so good, but I just don't like smoke, so I didn't grade it so high. I'm like, really? Really? Please step away from me right now. Back it up because I cannot handle comments very well. <laughs> so our smoker is right down the road. So we say he's local, probably mm -hmm. 10 miles away. Mm -hmm. yep. And the other local ingredient that we source is our bacon. Oh, yeah. yeah. So we do a bacon Gouda using Nolichek um, bacon. And we recently changed that to a no nit nitrate bacon. So that's exactly. something new and very exciting for us as well. Mm -hmm. So, so we're still a very small three marine. So if people have suggestions, even after the show, shoot them to us. Uh, we're we always look for our new flavors and what's next. So you didn't do the bacon with me, huh? I have no, to say, time. like, oh, we can do this again. I would have, but Laurie said no. All right, I'm all right. I'll, you know, so I'm, <laughs> I'm going to be looking for a box coming next week with some. Okay, we'll, we'll and, make me know that. Mental 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 mental. Maybe sneak a bottle of uh, spotted cow in there for me, you know. You, so, got it. you know, when I do pork chops uh, on the grill, cumin is one of my favorites on here. And I was thinking about uh, uh, that you could stuff a uh, pork loin with this, and this would be absolutely over the moon in the flavor profile. But 
its smokiness is really unique. Uh, I was I was trying to come up with a description of it earlier when I was trying to do the pairing, and what I kept coming back to is that this is kind of like a barbecue thing. So I thought, you know what? How about I throw in a little bit of hot honey? And uh, this is Perseverance Society, their hot honey. And it's habanero and it, it has a, a little bit of a kick to it, but kind of like uh, uh, spicy chicken and waffles and uh, uh, honey. I bet that's really good. We're waiting for Crazy. Mike. Oh, no. oh my God, it's just <laughs> How did he respond? spicy barbecue. If you like hot, spicy barbecue, that's that's what this comes out with. That's it's absolutely awesome. fabulous. It's, it's incredible for a cheese to be able to give this much flavor and intensity. So I paired it with something that basically what I want to do is I want to cool it down. I want to take a little bit of the intensity off of it. I don't want to make it bigger. I, 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 I want to kind of balance it out a little bit. And so I used the Boston uh, Beer Company, the Sam Adams uh, Summer Ale. And, you know, it's just getting ready to come out now. And uh, it's got a little bit of a lemon to it. And that citrus cuts into this. And think about a little bit of citrus on, the, um, you know, on a cumin and chicken and all that. and really just balances it out very well. That sounds amazing. Wow. Just keep enjoying. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I am, I am. Well, you know, this is, uh, uh, when, when I get done at uh, uh, basically around five o'clock, which we're, we're sneaking up to, uh, this turns into my happy hour cheese board with myself and my wife. So we get to sit down, Joan and I get to uh, have that there. We have a cocktail uh, uh, or finish up some beers and enjoy a, a nice little cheese board kind of built up. So, uh, you know, it is a bonus and, uh, you know, and of course uh, having, you know, your cheeses is always exceptional. So we hope everyone enjoyed them. Um, I know it was fun sharing them with you on National Cheese Day. Yeah, I'm glad that you guys got a chance to come out today. You know, it's always a pleasure to be able to talk with you. Uh, I really miss uh, uh, typically when we do an event together and we're teaching and then uh, we get done around five o'clock, we head on off to the bar for a cocktail and enjoy each other's company and get a hang out. So, this is as close as that we can get at this point, but I'm hoping that in the sometime near future, we'll be able to, uh, you know, meet up again and do some fun things. Yeah. Yeah, we always have a good time with you. And uh, it's just fun to educate people about cheese. There's so much that I did not know before I started. Um, I would go, before I started making cheese, I would go to the store and look for Gouda, just Gouda. And, uh, and now, now, now I go to not a, to the store, pick up a piece of cheese, and I think, wow, they don't ask enough because now I know how much uh, work it's involved, the dedication, the passion, and it's so much fun to see all the people that come here and actually know so much more already than I did at that time. Uh, but I had to go and become a cheese maker before I started even realizing that. And mm -hmm. we love having people here. The interaction with uh, and I would invite everybody come over here come cuddle with a calf and snuggle with a cow and try your cheeses and uh, and that's where the best times come you know that keeps the shrink away I think so good food good friends some drinks you know so thank you for for uh, for making this happen Michael I cannot uh, thank you enough for all the support and um, it's always fun to hang out with you all right. Well, again, love you guys and uh, can't wait till we do another one and uh, do some more fun things. Uh, with 19 different varieties, I think we can do this again and again and again. So looking forward to that. Yeah, this will be recorded and you can go to my YouTube channel, Michael Landis Cheese, and be able to find more. And of course, this is 
uh, proudly sponsored by the Dairy Farmers of Wisconsin, and we greatly appreciate their support here. Lori, Marika, really great to see you. Have a great time. I'll we'll talk yeah, to you. in tomorrow, and I just want to say hi to Don and uh, uh, and our husband. So uh, thank you all, Brian. Thank you all for watching, everybody, and I uh, hope to welcome you here. Hugs and kisses from a distance. Bye. Bye.